I'm going to briefly explain Nikola Tesla's non-dispersive concentrated energy projector. A lot of people know it as his death ray. It's pretty much a Van de Graaff ion accelerator on steroids. To go quickly through it, there are a couple different parts to it. There's the two nozzles that he has that he designed for being able to do this without needing it to be done in a vacuum tube. There are the evacuated bulbs for, I call them the vacuum anti-arcing bulbs. So with the bulbs, he then designed a way for improving electrostatic generators. To come back to the vacuum bulbs, Tesla suggested to put these bulbs all over the upper terminal. A nice spherical terminal. You can put a platform inside here for all the other stuff. Anyone can be inside of here, but it'll be perfectly safe because the charges will always want to go to the outside of the upper terminal. And due to the physics of a conducting sphere or conducting spherical shell, the inside is always shielded, not just from this, these, any charges and from here from going into the center, but also the upper terminal here will act as a perfect Faraday cage almost. Now, Inside our vacuum bulb, we've got these all over the upper terminal, basically pumping electrons up to the top. Tesla says you can bring it up to 50 to 100 million volts. That's 50,000 kV to 100,000 kV. That's a lot. So essentially you put you pump up the electrons to the top this upper terminal becomes extremely negatively charged but due to these special evacuated bulbs that tesla designed the upper terminal is not capable of arcing off the larger the voltage you can bring this upper terminal to the higher the charge that you can put on there the larger the electrostatic force that can be applied to some particle if it's the same charge. If the upper terminal is negative 50 million volts to negative 100 million volts, because if we're pushing electrons up here, it's gonna become negatively charged. If this is 50 to 100 million volts, and we somehow bring the electric charge of this and make a connection between this and some sort of conductive particulate, if you make these two electrically connected, this will assume the same negative 50 to 100 million volts if this is negative 50 million volts and this is negative 50 million volts, what's going to happen to this? Shoo, 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 shoo. Very fast with a lot of force. Anywhere between 50 and 100 million volts, if these are the same charge, these are not staying near each other for very long. And what Tesla says, what you need to do this effectively is you have to have the particulate in a very high vacuum so that it can actually accelerate to its full velocity. This is very similar to hydrogen fusers, not all of them, but some of them they want, you want to actually have them at a very low pressure so that the protons can actually be accelerated fast enough and there's nothing for them to smash into while they're being accelerated between the two potentials that it's usually using to accelerate them for an electrostatic version. So the premise of this whole thing is not that it would shoot off electric beams or electricity and electric arts or lightning bolts. The premise of this, he says, is that he would have actual, you basically use a reel of thin tungsten wire and you feed that into a nibbler. That little nibbler, all these little tungsten bits that he talks about, very, very, very tiny tungsten bits, each of them individually between a 15 centimeter long nozzle. That's about 15 centimeters right here. Little tiny tungsten bits. If you have this dome two meters and you had this at a radius of four, we're not talking much. Two meters is about, about this. About my a little more than my height. So if the dome was a little bit bigger than twice my my size, and you had a 15 centimeter nozzle on the outer part of this, where the little tungsten bits are accelerated between between 15 centimeters, it'll go from zero meters per second to 16,000 meters per second. For a record, speed of sound, 340 meters per second. It's like Mach 40. It's kind of insane. That's, that's way higher than any rocket we have. I think the limit to rockets somewhere around 5,000 meters per second. I think 10,000 would be putting a really large upper estimate on that. So now there are more parts to functionally make it work. Like how do you make feed this connection between here and here without discharging it? I've got this idea of using an evacuated tube because Tesla talks about putting the tungsten reel in an evacuated vessel so that these can be fed to the nozzle in a vacuum that in this evacuated vessel you could basically feed a laser down the line, sight of line into the nozzle. And if it was just evacuated enough, this laser could ionize the evacuated space just between the terminal and the nozzle for just a moment, just enough to just discharge what it needs onto each particulate.